ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم لا اله الا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده واعز جنده وعزم الاحزاب وحده لا اله الا الله ولا نعبد الا اياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كريم الكافرين ونصلي ونسلم على المبعوث رحمه للعالمين سيدنا محمد الذي قال الله عز وجل في حقه يا ايها النبي انا ارسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في حقه وما ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين وقال سبحانه وتعالى في حقه وانك لعلى خلق عظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى صحابته الخيرين النيرين وعلى التابعين وتابع التابعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم امين ثم اما بعد يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم نذكر خلقه والناس اجمعين بقوله في موضع سوره النساء بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا ويقول سبحانه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ويقول سبحانه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويقول سبحانه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فانساهم انفسهم اولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي اصحاب النار واصحاب الجنه اصحاب الجنه هم الفائزون اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك الفائزين واجعلنا من عبادك المتقين واجعلنا من عبادك المفلحين واجعلنا من ورثه جنه النعيم برحمتك يا رحمن الرحيم اللهم امين ثم اما بعد we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى we praise him as Allah سبحانه وتعالى should be praised we thank Allah for the seemingly good and the seemingly bad <coughs> We thank Allah and we put our trust in Allah. In that contract between us and Allah. But if we are to believe and translate that knowledge and belief into actions. If we are to believe, if we are to trust, really trust Allah and His wisdom, that Allah in return we set up our life and our destiny in life in a way that you will come out of that the winner, the one who's successful. But many times, us human beings, we want the food and the fruit, but we don't want to go through the process. Even though we realize it's not possible to accomplish that in real life, but somehow, somehow, when it comes to our faith, we become irrational. For example, who expects to become a manager and a software engineer without learning software? You go 12 years to high school, four years of college, maybe you do a couple years of masters. Or you spend your whole life learning coding. 
But somehow, somehow, when it comes to our faith, we want to become the best coders out there and the best programmers without studying coding and programming, without going to school, without learning from a teacher, learning on the net, without doing anything. When it comes to faith, we become, we become wishful thinkers and wishful. And the Prophet said, faith is not by wishing. They say, Iman with tamanni. Taman means wishing. Iman is not by wishing. But that which has settled in the heart, you are convinced of your faith. You see the point of it, you understand it, you believe in it, you actually see the point of it, you agree with it, and then you translate that into action. So it's not just theories and thinking beautiful in the abstracts or thinking ideal thoughts that has no bearing in real life. <coughs> so that's called wishful thinking. I wish I'm like this, I wish I wish I can do this, I wish I can do that. And you know, sometimes the poor would say I don't have money. And I wish until I wait to become rich so that I can give. In answer to that, the Prophet said, one dirham, one dollar was ahead of a hundred thousand dollars. Dirhamun Sabaqa went ahead, won the race, me at the Alfi One hundred thousand dirham. How you are so He said the one who gave a hundred thousand, he had a million. But the one who gave that one dirham, that was all what he had. So one donated ten percent of his wealth, the other donated 100% of his wealth. The difference, 90%. So, if the poor will wait to become rich to donate one day, may Allah help us, right? This is called wishful thinking. I will wait to become rich so that I can get. And interestingly, those people never make it to riches because they don't understand the key to Allah's wealth and to Allah's giving is for you to give. Give and Allah will give you. Give and Allah will replace it. As Allah said, So the question that you and I have to ask ourselves, are we wishful thinkers? Do we apply our logic and rational, what works in life to our faith? You want to become an amazing believer? You want Allah to listen to your dua? Fine. Allah said, if you want to know how far am I from you? I'm near. I answer the dua who makes dua to me. But then, it's a small thing, if you can do it, please. And we say, what is it, Ya Allah? Allah says, I also made dua to you. I called you. I actually called you. SubhanAllah. So, but you didn't answer the call. You are calling upon me to help you. I actually called upon you to do something. Not to help me, but to do something. But you didn't answer the call. Then I mean, why shall I answer your call? So Allah says, You want me to answer? I answer the call of the caller when he calls me. But this let me do one thing. You want Allah to make istijab of your dua? Answer Allah's dua. Because Allah didn't force his da'wah to you upon you. He gave you life and a choice. He didn't force it upon you. He could have easily forced it upon you. If Allah can force his will on the sun, the moon, and the earth, the galaxy and the billions of galaxies, if Allah can force his will on them, he can sure force his will on you. And sometimes he makes you see that. You wake up in the morning and you say, I'm going to do this and this and that. And you do everything you need to do this and this and that. And at the end of that, the day you accomplish nothing. Because Allah's will was working against your will. And Allah's will won at the end. So maybe you can see Allah at the end of the day through the destiny that happened with you. But people don't see that. And people want Allah to answer their dua, but they don't want to answer Allah's call. So Allah says, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُ بِي Let them call upon me, and let them call upon me with faith. Let them believe in me. So that they might be guided at the end. So, brothers and sisters, this is a time 
of which we only stand up. Today is Friday. Okay? We have entered the realm of Rajan. They say in Rajan, you plant the seed. In Shaban, you water it. In Ramadan, it grows. In Laylatul Qadr, you pick the fruit. So, we don't leave ourselves to the last minute. If your friend says I'm coming to visit you, you say, oh, I'm sure, you know what, just come after 15 minutes. I'm really, just want to sit up the house, I'm really busy right now, just come after 15 minutes. Even if you need to use the bathroom, shower, or just come after half an hour. But if someone that you don't know that well, and they're like, you know, highly respected in the community, you would want at least a week notice. If the mayor would like to have a fundraising in your house, you would like a month notice because you have to sit up in your house and for lots of people. And because the mayor is visiting you. If a congressman, you probably want six weeks. If a senator, maybe two months. If the president, you really want to have a three months, at least. The president talks to you on Laylatul Qadr, the night of the Qadr. You don't prepare for one day. You at least have to go three months. Shaban, Rajab, Shaban, and then Ramadan comes. And maybe even before Rajab, you need to be ready. So, Allah gives us a chance so that we kind of re energize ourselves. Friday is a chance for you to come and re energize yourself. Once a year, you get Ramadan. And once in Ramadan, you get Laylatul Qadr. <coughs> You are really there to talk with your Lord. Even though your Lord listens to you every day, but Allah gives you a chance to prepare yourself. And there's no better preparation for Ramadan and for you to be ready for Ramadan and for you to be ready to meet your Lord and speak with your Lord every night in Ramadan, especially Laylatul Qadr, then you start getting in your head what it means to believe in life after death and the Day of Judgment. Because the whole equation changes. When a person inside him or her don't believe that there is life after death, they will live their life in a certain way. So, all goals has to be accomplished in this world. All joys have to be accomplished in this world. All pain has to be avoided in this world. All desires have to be a cup because they've got no other chance. So you want to try it all and find it all because what's your other chance? None. So you might as well you want to do all of it. And then people go crazy trying to taste every desire, every lust, every want. And sometimes when they run out of that, they start skydiving and throwing themselves off planes because they want to know how that feels. Because they are an out of things fulfilling. And many times the parachute doesn't open. And that would be the last time they tried anything in life. So, brothers and sisters, but when a person believes, not thinks, but believes that there is life after death, then things will change. Many times, we are ashamed of ourselves as Muslims, especially in the Muslim countries, because of how much bribery goes on, how much injustice goes on, how much corruption goes on. And we say, our faith is amazing and beautiful. And we are proud of it. And Muslims should be to be amazing and beautiful, like their faith. Because if what you believe in is amazing, fair, just, beautiful, merciful, and you believe in that, you actually actually believe in that, you have no choice but to display these qualities. So sometimes we're said, you know, we're kind of embarrassed um, of that, you know. Thank God for the last president because he made us not embarrassed anymore. So now it's equal, even Stephen. But anyway, we're embarrassed because of how things run in the back. And then we ask ourselves, don't even everyone believe in Allah, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah? Doesn't everyone believe in that faith? And then maybe that opens a discussion, what does it mean when someone believes? To us, we have buoyed faith down to words. I bear witness that there is no God but one God. I bear witness Muhammad is his messenger. I believe that there is a day of judgment. Okay, God, are you happy now? Because now I'm going to go and live my life. 
and I'm going to go and destroy the world, and I'm going to go and do corruption, and I'm going to go and do this. But I believe in you. And we have boiled faith into words, right? Words. And even we use a hadith. Whosoever says la ilaha illallah goes to Jannah. And we never kind of finish the hadith. Whosoever says la ilaha illallah and believes in it. Whosoever says la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and actually give it its right. Give it its right. We never finish the hadith. What's the right of I bear witness that there is no God? There's so many rights. You have to believe in justice, display justice, believe in purity, display purity, not corruption. You have to believe in mercy, display mercy. You have to believe in being upright and display being upright. Because we say in Arabic, if someone says I'm a good diver, we say, okay, welcome, here's the ocean. Can you please show us? When someone says I'm a great and good Muslim, Allah says, okay, you know what? I'm going to test you to see if you're really good for your clean. So I'm going to make you jump into the real life and show me in real life, not in theory, not in words, that you are actually a good believer. So we become shocked with our own selves that we say something and we do something else. What's missing? What's missing is a big component in the middle, which is actually believing. And believing the type of faith that leads to transformation. Not the type of faith that is full of information, but the type of faith that is full of transformation. You learn something, you're going to apply it. You learn something, you're going to apply it. You learn something, you're going to apply it. Today, we're interested in lectures. We're interested in entertainment. We're interested into, you know, good speakers that make you laugh, when actually a good speaker is the one that makes you cry, rather. Anybody can make you laugh. A comedian can make you laugh. You don't need a sheikh to make you laugh. You need a sheikh to make you cry and realize what's going on in your life. You need someone to shock you and give you some shock and harm. Maybe you can wake up and be ready for the day of judgment. Because you don't know. Only Allah knows. One head will kill you, other head might not kill you. Who decides? I started my diagnosis with Brother Arif. Brother Arif from Bosnia. Unbelievable story. He is younger than me by three years. They go and find about his cancer. And we both, he actually started treatment one month before me. So I went back to him and I said, oh, this man breathed life into me. He said, Sheikh, don't worry, you know what I do? I said, well, he said, I go and take the chemo and I bike 10 miles every day. And he showed me there's an app that traces where you went with your bike. I said, you bike 10 times a day? He said, yes, sir. I said, how was the chemo? He said, terrible, but I don't care. I said, Jazakallah khair. You didn't even lie about it. So he breathed life in me. I'm looking at this guy, is full of life. So we continue taking treatment, treatment, same amount of time. At the end of the six months, alhamdulillah, Allah decided that I get to live. And Allah decided that he gets to die. And he passed away. May Allah have mercy on him. May Allah give his family sabr and shukr. And may Allah put the barakah in them so that they become his good deeds after his death. Amin. That's why, brothers and sisters, you know, I really think, you know, we all have to wake up. Because if you're not ready, life will not pamper you. If you are lucky, Allah will hit you to wake you up. If you're not lucky, Allah will let you do whatever you want to do, and then He will judge you on the Day of Judgment. You're going to have a good life, amazing life, but you're going to have such a hard Day of Judgment, God knows if you're going to make it or not. So which of the two? And that's why, brothers and sisters, how do you read your life? How do you see the destiny in your life? What do you see the trajectory of your life? Are you ready about it for your life? You go and get hired for a job. You want to know what the job is. You want to know from what time to what time. You want to know what's, what's the break hours. You want to know what's the salary. You want to know what's the vacation time. You want to know what's the paid vacation versus non-paid. You want to know what's the weekends. You want to know everything. We are on this planet hired for a job. We want to know what's the pay. We want to know when do we get to have a vacation. We want to know what, what is required. What's the timing. 
Because then you'll be in a job and very soon, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, you will be fired. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, in the Quran, if you trace the Quran in Quran al Karim, you will find out of all the six pillars of Iman, Allah always couples Shahada with believing in the Day of Judgment. Out of the whole other four, so the four will be left, like in the end of Surah Al Baqarah. آمن رسول الله وانزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل من آمن بالله ومن آيته وكتب الرسل. But where is it so much repeated in the Quran? من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر. Why the يوم الآخر is singled out of all the six pillars of faith, believing in God, believing in angels, books, prophets and messengers, divine destiny, and the day of judgment. Why Allah and the day of judgment is always coupled together in the Quran? out of everything else. Why? Because it's basically your faith is not complete. The story is not complete. Your faith is incomplete and you don't know where you're going if there is no Iman in the Day of Judgment. So someone can say, I believe Allah is there and I believe Allah is one and I believe God is one and He's the God of everything and everyone. But once I die, it's done. I'm not going to meet my Lord. No, my Lord will ask me. Again, their life will turn into, into a certain way and it's not going to be good. You want it, Allah tells you, listen, this is not a joke. Does any one of you people make something for nothing? Have you ever felt, where is the eye in Walmart that says the eye of useless stuff? And then you go shopping and you say, this is 9.99. What is it for? Nothing. Allah Azza wa Jal says, you, you, human would not manufacture something and do something and create something for nothing. But you are saying that I created a whole universe for nothing. Are you hearing yourself? We have not created the skies and the earth except with the truth, for the sake of the truth. We did not create them for amusement and playing, for purposelessness. So if there is a purpose, subhanAllah, in real life, Allah just says you read reality. With giving, with giving comes judgment. If you go to work and they cannot give you a salary at the end of the month, they are going to judge your performance. So Allah shows you these things in life to realize, okay, if I'm giving something, there will be judgment at the end. And I need to be ready. Huh? You go to school. They give you knowledge. They will judge you at the end of the semester with a test and a paper. You're not just going to say, oh, thank you, I learned the knowledge. I don't need a test. Okay. No, 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 hold on, sit down. Take the test. You're going to get an F if you don't take the test. You're going to be judged. Anything we do in life, right, has expectations. Whenever there is giving, there is expectations. When the husband says, I'm going to give my wife this, he has expectations on her time. When the wife says, and I will be your wife, there's expectation from the husband. Allah gives you life and gives you every blessing in life. But there will be no judgment. When do you do that in your daily life ever? And Allah asks us to think and reason with ourselves. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, with giving, there's always judgment. And with honor, always comes responsibility. So you look in the planet, and you see you are the highest species on the planet. Nothing is learned. Before you come, the dinosaurs had to go. So that you're not walking the street and there's a dinosaur running after you. So the dinosaurs had to go for Adam to come. So Adam comes and you are the species on the top of the world. With your intelligence, you are subjugating everything. You're going now to Mars, you're going diving deep in the ocean, you fly higher than a bird, dive deeper than a whale, and, and faster than anything. You run on land faster than a cheetah. Allah gave you everything and all of these gifts and all of this honor for you to be on the top of this food chain and all the species, this doesn't come with responsibility. I mean, imagine you apply for a job, the owner of the company meets you for lunch and says, okay, you know what, I like you, hired. Okay, <coughs> what am I gonna do? Shh, come with me. You go with him, he walks you into his company, it's basically a 12-story building. 
You walk into the first story, there's 50 people working, typing, sending faxes, receiving emails, making this, talking, meeting. You go second floor, another 50, another 50, another 50, another. You reach to the 12th floor, and there's only one desk. He says, welcome, this is your desk. Without him uttering a single word, what do you have to figure? You got hired as the CEO, the top manager of this company. You are only answerable to him, to this owner. You know the amount of excitement that comes with that? You're going to get excited for half an hour. Then you're going to sit down thinking, what in the world is my responsibility? As we say, the happiness will go, the drunkness will go, and the real thought will come. And you'll be like, what am I supposed to do? Because you know very well, if you don't do a good job in whatever this man hired you to do, and obviously he thinks of you so highly that he put you on the top, that there will be very big responsibility and very big judgment. If you don't pass and carry those responsibility and you execute well, you will be fired. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings you to planet Earth, viruses, bacteria, insects, um, between, uh, under the insects there's plant, and in plants there's fungus, you know, another, it's not plants, it's fungi, and then there's plants, and then there's insects, and then there's fish, and there's birds, and then there's wild beasts, and there's wild animals, and there's uh, domesticated animals, this and that, and after all of this, you come and on the top. You know, that's more than 12-story building. That's more like 12,000-story building. There's 1.2 living species on planet Earth. 1.2 million living species, and you come on the top of 1.2 million, and you haven't figured out that you have a responsibility? You haven't figured out there's something to do? You haven't figured out that there is a judgment? Come on, this is called wishful, foolish, willing, by choice thinking. And that's why Allah says, I created the universe in a way that it will communicate with you that there is a day of judgment, that you are responsible because of how many blessings you have, how much honor you were given. Even if Allah didn't say in the Quran, I have preferred you over a great portion of my creation, reality will communicate that with you. So now imagine, reality and the Quran are saying the same thing. So the question is, are you ready? And you cannot be ready by saying, yes, I ready because I believe in the day of judgment. You can only be ready if you are on the path of transformation. If you are on this beautiful, amazing journey. It's amazing. You know when someone tells you we're going hiking tomorrow. We're going off-roading. We're going mudding tomorrow. We're going to take the car off the road and we're going to go hiking. You're going to wear the right boots. You're going to wear the right pants. You're going to wear the right shirts. You're going to take with you the right car and the right gear. You're not going to go hiking with a tuxedo. When Allah tells you, it's going to be a, a good ride, it's going to be an amazing, but it will be up and down and you will be tested. You're like, yes, that's the fun in life. Let's go and live life for the sake of Allah. I'm going to take with me the right gear, the right food. And when you go low, low on the supply of taqwa, Allah brings the month of Ramadan every 11 months so that you can fill your tank of taqwa so that the next 11 months you have the right food, you got roughened up, now you're in shape, supposedly, you lose weight in Ramadan, not gain weight, because you're fasting right, not wrong. But once your Ramadan comes and it puts you in shape, you're physically tough and rough and, and, and in a good shape. You are iman-wise in tough and rough in a good shape. You have taqwa, you have iman, you have yaqeen, and you're ready for the 11 months of testing for this gonna be wide ride and that will go up and down. And anything can go, including you dying. And that's the fun of it. And that's the pleasure of it. That you go through it with Allah, for Allah, and in the name of Allah. And brothers and sisters, if you don't remember that every day, no, not every day. Five times a day. Actually, not five times a day. Seventeen times a day. Actually, not 17 times a day, but more like 33 times a day. You're going to get lost, and life will chew you and spit you like nothing. Between your Fardoka 17, and if you do some Sunnah 12, and you do some Witter 3, you're going to end up anywhere around 31 to 33, some odd number. 33 times a day, you keep on reminding yourself, Maliki Yomidin. 
I need to get out of the box of life. I need to remember this life is a box. I need to get out of the box. There is life outside the box. And that's the real life. I will meet my Lord. Please, Alhamdulillah, please, Ya Allah, be merciful to me. Please, Ya Allah, I'm going to worship you and I'm going to ask your help for this tough ride. Please, Ya Allah, guide me what to do. I need your guidance in every decision. Please, Ya Allah, you keep on repeating it, repeating it, repeating it with the meaning. Because God forbid, if you unmiss, if you forget Allah for one hour, maybe ten minutes, maybe one minute, or as the Prophet Sallallahu said, Ya Allah, it's your mercy that I'm seeking. Fix all my matters. Help me to fix all my matters. And do not leave me to myself and my whims and desires and wants. And do not leave me to myself a blink of an eye or less than that. The Prophet ﷺ did not want to make a nafsi decision a blink of an eye. Because you make a decision of a blink of an eye and that's the wrong decision. Next second you're dead. You have ended your life on the wrong notes. So he said, Allahumma rahmataka arju. Fa aslih li shakni kulla. Aslih li shakni kulla. Wa la tekinni li nafsi. Tarfata aynin. Aw aqalla min dalik. Or less than a blink of an eye. Yani a fraction of a second. That's why you need to pray 33 times rakha. And 33 times you remember the day of judgment. May Allah make us like that. Aqul ma aslam wa misafin wa alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاه والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم يا مصدق الاسباب صدق لنا اسباب الخير يا رب العالمين اعلم عباد الله ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي نبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله ويا اسال الله من السسس ان الله يرحمك Sayyiduna Ali Abi Talib Rabbi Allah Ta'ala Abu Allah, the fourth Khalifa, said something very profound. He said, people are sleeping. When they die, they wake up. Don't be sleeping your entire life, and then when you die, you wake up. That's a very late wake-up call. You don't want to wake up anymore. You want to be with Allah Azza wa you want to be really awakened, as they say, the triple A policy. Awake, alert, and aware. Most of the people are not awake, not alert, and not aware of what's going on. They're just going with life. And life will take you, chew you, spit you, shaitan will take you, chew you, spit you. And at the end of the day, when you come to blame shaitan on the day of judgment, shaitan will say, hold on, I have no power over you. I just whispered to you, and my God, you fell for it. So don't blame me, blame yourself. So, we don't want to blame ourselves. We don't want to live and die with a nafs al amara bisu, always thinking of evil, thinking of bad, thinking of evil. We want this nafs to become nafs dawama, then become nafs mutmainna, then become nafs radiya, then become mardiya, then become from al waliya al muqarrabin. Subhanallah, one of us, when you make a thousand, you want ten. When you have ten, you want a hundred thousand. When you have a hundred thousand, you want a million. You want more. How in the world are you happy by being a Muslim one day? Who goes for that? That's step number one. That's baby step. You say, I submit to Allah, but I don't get anything. Allah says, okay, I accept your submission. Just do it for God's sake. Do it. Stay away from haram. Do halal. Do the fart. But then Allah expects from you to grow up, just like a child grows up. And then now, you're not submitting with no understanding. You're submitting with understanding and with reasoning. You actually convinced of what you're submitting to. So that's Iman because you're convinced of it. If you're not convinced, there's no Iman. And then after that, you have to become a master. You have to go for perfection, you have to go for beauty, and you have to go for goodness. And that's the three words that translate one word in Arabic, Ihsan. Ihsan is something good, Ihsan is something beautiful, and Ihsan is to do something perfect. 
you go to the perfection of your faith. So you start seeing Allah anywhere and everywhere. You worship Allah as if you see Him. But if you don't see Him with these eyes, you see Him with the eyes of your heart, He sees you. And He doesn't need eyes like your eyes to see. So you wake up, you grow up, you, 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 you mature. But you're going to live your life and die. Okay, I pray five times a day and I fast Ramadan. I mean, come on. There is a time that you should be ashamed of that. And you should go for the next step. It's like, you keep on sitting with men and say, MashaAllah, I finished my elementary school. So, MashaAllah, what do you mean? I finished my elementary school. Come on, man. Yeah, I, I, actually I finished sixth grade. Okay, we know what elementary school is. So, brothers and sisters, want for your akhirah more, just like you want for your dunya more. And make your dunya, this world, the path to your akhirah. Allah wants from us to see us standing up for justice, standing up for fairness, standing up for goodness, standing up for mercy. Allah doesn't want to see a group of cowards who want to do nothing about nothing. I just want to be, just leave me alone, I want to do nothing. High school kids are walking out of their classes saying, enough is enough. This is wrong, this is bad, giving weapons to criminals. And adults with beards, they are scared and sitting at home. When are we going to wake up? Do you believe in Allah or not? Do you believe in justice? Allah, first principle in Islam is justice. Do you believe in goodness? Do you believe in fairness? Do you believe in mercy? Do you believe people have a right to know what the truth is? Do you believe in standing up for what is right? Or do you believe the whole world has to stand up for you when it comes to your rights? And you stand up for nothing? We have to graduate, brothers and sisters. This train of five daily prayers, praying almost 33 rak'ah every day, just as much as you make tasbih after every salah, fasting every Ramadan, going to hajj. What is it? That's the training camp that never ends. You have a continuous education, continuous training till the day you die. But why do we get the training? We get the training so that we can stand up and go and do something good and right. You keep on getting the training, but doing nothing with the training. MashaAllah. Imagine someone went to college and he keeps on going to college and going to Finally, the professor said, can you just graduate, man? Can you leave us alone? We still do the same thing 10 times. Can you just go? Get a job. Get a life, man. And we keep on praying and praying and fasting and fasting and nothing. We're standing up for nothing. Sign up for this petition. No, no, I don't like it. Stand up for this cause. No, no, I don't like it. Do this. No, no, no. Let's stand for this change. No, no, no. I'm not standing for change. And then what? What's the value of your life at the end of the day? You stand up for nothing when Allah says, stand up for me and for justice. Bear witness for me and bear witness for justice in two different ayat in the Quran. Brothers and sisters, enough pampering yourself. And enough, you know, patting yourself in the back. And it's about time to fold up your sleeves and, and learn your deen, believe in your deen and apply your deen. And make your life count and leave a print in life that will benefit millions of people to come. Enough cowardness, enough weakness, enough hopelessness, enough helplessness. The Prophet used to say, Ya Allah, I seek refuge in you from hopelessness and helplessness. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hamni wal-hazan, wa'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasal, wa'udhu bika min al-jubni wal-bukh. I seek refuge in you from cowardness and stinginess. Coward, coward, down, coward, coward. I don't want to, I don't want to get involved in politics. I don't What is this? And I seek refuge in you from the burden of debt and the plots of men. Khas, you seek refuge in Allah and you go on and you stand up for what you're supposed to stand up for. May Allah Azza wa Jal awaken us. May real men and women out of us. People who will make a change in life and history and bring goodness to this world and leave a good footprint. May Allah make us from those who fulfill the purpose of their life. And may Allah make our akhirah better than our dunya. May Allah make our dunya a good dunya and a purposeful life. And may Allah use us for justice, for goodness, for the truth, for that which is right for everyone, Ya Rabbi Alameen. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us courageous, not cowards. Generous, not stingy. Relaxed and focused, not stressed and depressed. May Allah Azza wa Jal help us and help us to bond together to achieve any goodness in this life, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Allahumma Ameen. Allahumma Fa Ilana Awli Muslimin Awli Muslimat Wal Mu'minin Awli Mu'minat Al Ahiyya Alameenum Wal Amat Inna Ka Qariqun Sami'u Mujibu Da'awad اللهم اعز لنا الاسلام وانصر بنا المسلمين واعذنا كلمه الحق والدين واجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين الصادقين يا رب العالمين 
آمين يا رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا حبيبنا محمد وعلى آله يا رب العالمين كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وقم الصلاة إن صلاة تنامي في الشهر والمنكر ولكم بارك الله على ما